I'm Andre Hugh and welcome to the latest edition of the SK Newsline Newscast. We begin with politics as Sunday, February 16th marks the fifth year since Team Unity was elected into office. The opposition is calling for the Prime Minister to ring the bell and call elections, claiming his time has, has expired. But the government constitutionally has more time before it can call an election and it appears to be using some of that time with no indication that elections may be called soon. Here is SK Newsline's Glenn Bart with a closer look at this political tale. The fifth anniversary of the coalition Team Unity government was achieved on Sunday, 16 February, and the Labour Party is calling on Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris to call general elections. The Prime Minister has stated that according to the Constitution of St. Kitts and Nevis, he had until August to have the elections. According to a statement by leader of the Labour Party, Dr. Denzel Douglas, the extension to August should only be used if it were an emergency. The Labour Party has stepped up their campaign activities with a small and brief demonstration Monday on Church Street past the government headquarters. Walking with placards and bells, Labour Party officials said they were signaling to the Prime Minister that the Team Unity's time in administration was up. This is just a build up of what is to, to come. As you know, the 16th of February, this government is expired and the people have already decided they don't need them. So we tell him to ring the bell. We need the bell. He needs to ring the bell so people can make that choice of getting rid of this, this unity government. Glenn Bart for SKN Newsline. How can countries in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, the ECCU, overcome some of the economic challenges they face as small island developing states? That was an issue put to some of the ministers of finance at a press conference concluding the ECCU Monetary Council meeting at the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank on Friday. SK News 9's Glenn Bart has more. Micro and macroeconomic policies must support future economic growth of member countries of the OECS, said Prime Minister Alan Chastanet at the end of a meeting of the ECCU Monetary Council held at the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. Responding to SKN News 9 about the future growth potential for OECS member countries, responding to SKN News 9 about the future growth potential for OECS member countries, Prime Minister Shastana said there were limited options and it was necessary to gain more out of existing industries Tourism, by pursuing new avenues. Offshore financial services, um, agro processing, um, and now the new um, uh, um, orange industry of the creative industry. All are, are sectors which we believe that we can excel at and that we have the resources to be able to be competitive on a global basis. And what we must make sure is both our micro policies and macro policies are there to be able to support those particular sectors. Um, I'm very encouraged that recently the CTO has made a huge amendment in going back to becoming a research and, um, and a statistical entity because I think that given the importance of that industry in this region, that we are still looking at historical numbers rather than where we potentially can go. So if we look at a country like Aruba, which has a population of 110,000 people, yet it has a GDP of three and a half billion, and primarily all of that is in the area of tourism. Um, and when you look at the total numbers that we produce out of this region, particularly to the US, Canada, and the UK, there is a tremendous amount of, of, of opportunity for growth that we, would, that we can have. But it certainly requires um, the requisite macro policy to support that. And for many years, um, the macro policy that has been in place in many of our countries, and certainly by the regional institutions, not the ECCB, um, have not been complementary to the growth of the sector. Uh, so I would again say to you, tourism, also offers us the opportunity of increasing airlift, increasing capacity within our countries, and creates now a platform for financial services um, and also the orange um, economy. I don't know. Speaking at a press conference of the Monetary Council, Dominica's Prime Minister Roosevelt Scarrett expressed the view that productivity and other issues also impact the sub-region. I think also we have to look at the issue of uh, our productivity in the region. Um, and both in the public and private sector. Uh, are we getting sufficiently in return for the amount we spend? And we also have to look at, at human resource development and the, and the training of our people. Are we training people 
um, uh, to align with our national priorities or regional priorities, or are people just going out there to acquire degrees that one may not be able to find them a job, and secondly, um, that may not be um, necessary for our current um, development of thrust. Um, so, so I think these things we need to look at um, going forward. And I also think, to, from a regional standpoint, I mean, we have some cooperation taking place, functional cooperation, etc. But we need to look at what are some of the things we can we can share um, in terms of of, um, of doing things together. So, is is there something that we are all doing that we can uh, consolidate into one country? And do it on our behalf if each was pitching in to, to make it happen. Um, because we have to look at the issue of access to, to credit and the impact of uh, climate change on our region, the, the cost of reconstruction, um, and the potential of these things having an impact on your fiscal space and your debt burden. The OECD's Prime Minister strongly believes that the multi-pronged approach remains a practical means to achieve economic growth in the coming years. Glenn Bart for SKN Newsline. Police are denouncing the creation and dissemination of a false missing person poster, which they say led to at least one person being questioned on Sunday, February 16th. The information the police said was presented similar to that of an unofficial police missing person poster, but has been proven to be a hoax. The police were able to confirm that an individual named on the poster was in good condition at home with family. The High Command, in a statement Sunday, strongly denounced acts such as this, which they said are meant to maliciously deceive the public. Missing person reports are very serious matters, the police statement said. They continued that the impact of such incidents are far-reaching and have a negative effect on families, society and the state. Agencies such as the police allocate large amounts of resources to these cases. Every missing person report brought to attention of the police, officially and unofficially, is treated with the highest level of urgency and seriousness. They, they each result in the start of an investigation. The High Command therefore takes this opportunity to warn persons against making false reports and or manipulating official police material to create false documents and images. This type of behavior will not be tolerated, the statement said. The police reminded media houses to be vigilant by verifying information before sharing it with the public. Otherwise, they stand to mislead the public when they fail to do so. The police said several media houses would have shared the false poster without first confirming its authenticity with the police. Investigation into the matter are ongoing, police said. March 5th is the date set for the Nevis Allen Assembly by-election to fill the vacant Nevis 5 seat left by the resignation of Joseph Parry. More in this report. A by-election will be held in the Nevis Allen Assembly constituency number 5, St. Thomas's Parish, on March 5. Premier Mark Brantley, in a statement on Friday, disclosed that in lieu of the resignation of longtime serving representative Joseph Parry, a by-election was due within 90 days of his resignation. I am to advise that I have consulted consistent with the Constitution, with the Honorable Prime Minister, and as a consequence of that consultation, I have yesterday written to His Excellency the Governor General, signaling that nomination day for candidates in the election to find a replacement representative for the good people of St. Thomas's, Nevis 5, will be Tuesday the 25th of February 2020, and election day will be March 5th, 2020. I am hopeful that the people of St. Thomas's will go out in their numbers and exercise their franchise and vote for the candidate of their choice to ensure that they have effective representation in the parliament in the Nevis Island Assembly. The opposition Nevis Reformation Party, NRP, has announced that Mrs. Cleone Stapleton Simmons as the candidate to contest the by-election. A formal announcement of her opponent will be announced in a public meeting Saturday night by the Concerned Citizens Movement, the CCM. And the incumbent Concerned Citizens Movement have on the weekend announced that Keith Scarborough will be contesting the seat for the party. More news to come after this break. At Najiko, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. 
But after all these years, he just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. You care about what goes on your skin. You care about the ingredients, organic and natural products. We have Rituals brand, Victoria's Secret and much more. Discover the collection of prestige natural beauty. There are too many chemicals. Time, Time to, change. to change. Go, Go to, to Lucky's, Lucky's Duty Free at King's Pavilion Hotel on Bay Road, Bastier. Treat yourself as a princess. Also, Bath and Body Works coming soon. Check us out on Facebook. Open hours are from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Give us a call. 466-7059. Quality Diagnostic Laboratory, your newest partner in your health care. We offer the latest in on-island clinical laboratory testing. For a comprehensive range of blood tests, urine tests, stool and other testing such as cholesterol and sugar testing, as well as hormone, kidney and liver functions and many more. Quality Diagnostic Laboratory is located at the corner of Kayon Street and Fines Avenue, opposite the Greenlands Pasture. Our opening hours from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday are designed with you in mind. We are also open on Saturdays, 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. for your further convenience. Call or contact us at 465-6657 or email us at info at qualitydiagnosticlab.com. Quality Diagnostic Laboratory. Excellence in performance. Banners, Banners commercial, commercial signs, signs, decal, decal printing, printing, canvas prints, 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 posters. We at Multigraphics are dedicated to providing quality products and service to our customers. Our team takes pride in the craftsmanship and is passionate about its work. Every job, large or small, is important. Most of our customers come to us through referrals. That's because our number one priority is service. We serve a wide variety of customers, such as restaurants, retail stores, manufacturers, trucking companies, and many more. Our capabilities include design, production, and installation. How can we help? We are located at Bird Rock at the Woods Wright Compound. Call us at 869-763-1511 or 784-491-7599. Multigraphics. Auto Plus Car Wash, located on the Collins Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Bring your car to Auto Plus Car Wash to remove water stains, wiper marks, Get your doors, roof panel cleaned, seat floor mats, buffing, headlights, and engine wash. You get quality service at the best price at Auto Plus Car Wash. They really care for your car. Call 765-5140 or visit them on the College Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Auto, Auto Plus, Plus Car Wash, where, where the service, service is, is number one. one. Welcome back. The court matter involving Grant and Powell continued to generate debate. Both Mr. Powell and Mr. Grant responded to the calls for them to resign on a Freedom Radio interview on Thursday. More in this report. John L. Powell and Lindsey Grant, partners of Grant and Powell Law Firm, have both denied any wrongdoing as it relates to the court matter involving the firm and Tanzania Tanzil, a client who has alleged misappropriation of funds. In an interview on Freedom Radio Thursday, both Mr. Grant, a government minister, and Mr. Powell both denied any wrongdoing and said the default judgment handed down in October last year did not implicate them in any misappropriation of funds to their client. Mr. Grant explains. Neither Lindsey Grant nor Jonel Powell owes the claimant who is Tanzil or any other person any $460,000. Um... Or any amount. Uh, or any amount. I want to say, first of all, that Tanzil, and I'm going to give the facts, very brief facts, and very simplistic facts, so we could understand. Tanzil sent to the law firm of Grant and Powell some $485,000 mm -hmm. US. He sent that matter to do three things. One, to acquire his citizenship 
because he's an economic citizen. Secondly, to purchase a condominium at the Royal St. Kitts Hotel. Yeah? And thirdly, to get his passport as a consequence of all that. That's what he did. We paid out, and this is very important, Junie, because I just told you he paid us $485,000, yes? Mm -hmm. We paid out on his behalf a total of $525,000, 500. And if you do the maths, we paid out over an amount of $45,000 on his behalf. And so in simple layman terms, he owes us $45,000. Mm -hmm. That will come out in court, and I so I don't want to complicate the matter. Those were his instructions to us to acquire his citizenship. We got that. His instruction was to get a condominium at Royal St. Kitts um, Hotel. He is in possession of that. His instruction was to get him his passport. He is also in possession of that. Mr. Gant said he believes this matter is being pushed as a political ploy by the legal team of Mr. Tanzil. A political ploy by Mr. Tanzil's legal team mm -hmm. to sully our good names in this political season. Well, it's the uh, and why I said that? Well. And mm -hmm. why I said that? Mm -hmm. Because when we go to the, the order, well, the, the judgment of the court, the judgment of the court dated the October 28th, I think it is, right. in paragraph 27. It says, it was clear that the court was satisfied that the claimant was not entitled to the order requiring them to return to him the sum of four hundred sixty thousand dollars. Right. And which, why, which, which, what time is this? From the this is the very same judgment, the same judgment, judgment, the same yeah. judgment that you've just raised. And why is Ventus saying that? Ventus is saying that because Ventus well knows that the four hundred sixty thousand dollars was never missing. Was never missing. It's in the condo. Mm -hmm. The four hundred sixty thousand was taken up and paid over for the condo which he has. And so that is why Ventus says it here, and I'll read it again. Mm -hmm. Ventus at paragraph 27. It was clear that the court was satisfied that the claimant was not entitled to the order requiring the return to him of the sum of $460,000. Mm -hmm. Can't be clearer than that. Mr. Powell concur with Mr. Grant that the judgment does not implicate them of misappropriation of their clients' funds. Paragraph 37, for the reasons explained above, I make the following orders. One, the application to set aside the default judgment is hereby refused. Two, the claimant shall file and serve witness statement, submissions, and authorities in respect of an assessment of damages within 21 days. Um, three, the defendant, if interested in participating in the assessment of damages, shall file and serve Form 31 within seven days of service of, by the claimant. Um, four submissions shall be also sorry submissions shall be also emailed, um, and that just speaks about how to how to file the submissions. Five, the hearing on the assessment of damages shall take place on the twelfth of December, and six, cost to the claimant in the sum of seven hundred and fifty dollars to be paid by the defendants. Juni, those are the six orders of the court in this judgment. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no way in there that it speaks to any misappropriation or any other um, untoward activity or behavior in relation to us. It does not attach any guilt. Grant and Powell on Wednesday lost an application to appeal due to what Mr. Powell deemed procedural irregularities. He said the correct procedure has now been followed in filing an appeal and the matter should be heard before the appeal court. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. In a subsequent newscast, we'll bring you the response from the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party to this ongoing court matter involving Grant and Powell. Pursuing new avenues for economic growth is one of the intentions of the Team Unity government if they are re-elected after the next general elections. That's according to Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris. We have more in this report from Glenn Bart. As the Team Unity government heads into a general election this year, 2020, Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris said the team will pursue new avenues to further economic growth in St. Kitts and Nevis. Prime Minister Harris was responding to SKN Newsline's query regarding their intentions should they win the next general elections. 
and in the context that the Monetary Council of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank agreed to aim for 5% economic growth aimed at transforming the economies of the sub-region. According to Prime Minister Harris, the Team Unity government will be pursuing some new areas while strengthening existing economic pillars. And we are looking for new avenues as we speak, new avenues and new opportunities in the built out of our ICT um, plant in St. Kitts and Nevis, new job creation opportunities in the built out of a wellness center and wellness with respect to tourism attraction in the country. We are looking for that as we pursue alternatives in alternative energy new job creation opportunities. So yes, we will be working very hard. What we have to our advantage is that we have had positive growth for the last five years. Few others can speak to that. We have done very well in terms of our fiscal management, which give us some resources to finance our capital investment in the country. And certainly from what we have now, and where the country is heading, I think we can all be optimistic. I was also indicated that several new hotels will open and new infrastructure and housing projects will help further economic growth. Glenn Bart for SKN Newsline. The legal framework for the setting up of a medicinal cannabis authority was passed into law during a 12th of February sitting of the National Assembly. The authority will guide the process for the access to medicinal cannabis as an alternative to the established forms of medical treatment. We join Glenn Bart for more in this report. The legal framework for the setting up of a medicinal cannabis authority was passed into law during the 12th February sitting of the National Assembly. The authority will guide the process of access to medicinal cannabis as an alternative to established forms of medical treatment. It will employ a licensing scheme for the cultivation of medical marijuana, its production, possession and use. The legislation also grants authority for a medical doctor to prescribe a treatment of marijuana after going through a period of specialized training. However, Attorney General Vincent Barron emphasized that this new legislation has not legalized marijuana. This cannabis bill is not a license to our society. This is not to legalize and free up the weed. It is for weed to be regulated. And the regulations that we put in place here will be strict re regulations. We have had a softening of our attitudes in our country because of the studies done and an understanding that many of our citizens were being unfairly treated. That you can have small amounts of weed, of marijuana, for your own personal use. You should do so at your home. You should do so at a licensed place. If it is that you're moved by your religious beliefs, you're a member of the Rastafari brethren, you can do so in your own tabernacles. And there, there are no limits, we say, of how you can use those. You will not be interfered with. But you should not be on the streets, in public places, blowing smoke in people's face. However, changes in other legislation to come will increase the legal possession limit from 15 grams to 56 grams of marijuana. Glenn Bart for SKN Newsline. Why read the news when you can watch it? Introducing SKN Newsline, the Federation's only online TV news platform. SKN Newsline is an online TV news platform covering news in St. Kitts and Nevis. We provide a daily and accurate news on the big stories and stories of interest that other media outlets have ignored. You can watch SKN Newsline on our website, www.sknnewsline.com or Facebook page at www.fb.com slash SKN Newsline and also Subscribe to our SKN Newsline YouTube channel. SKN Newsline, your world, your news. KVK Enterprises at Boyd's Housing Development, Trinity Parish, St. Kitts. For all your t-shirt printing, banners and signs, promotional products, shipping, motivational speeches, computer classes, agro-processing, art and craft, and desktop publishing. Come to KVK Enterprises at Boyd's Housing Development, Trinity St. Kitts, 
telephone 661-0118 or 765-7270. Email drkhrystus at kvklives.com or visit www.kvklives.com. KVK Enterprises. Now you can have SK Newsline on the go. Introducing SK Newsline Android mobile app. Search SK Newsline in the Google Play Store. Download the app free and stay up to date with TV news in St. Kitts and Nevis in the palm of your hands. With this app, you can watch your news reports, watch our live news feed on SK Newsline TV, engage with us and other app users in the chat room, look at our special features, send us news tips, and call us directly. It's, it's news, news on, on the, the go. go. The SK Newsline Android mobile app. Download, Download it free today. today. SKNFA Premier League football is back. SK Newsline and Voice of the Caribbean Radio present the Premier League Match of the Week. Live video stream and radio commentary on St. Kitsinevis' premier online media networks. Every Saturday at 8 p.m., watch live football action at the Warner Park Football Stadium on the SK Newsline Facebook page, www.sknewsline.com, and at the Facebook page of the St. Kitts Nevis Football Association. You can also listen to live radio commentary at www.voiceofthecaribbean.net. It's the Premier League Match of the Week on SK Newsline and Voice of the Caribbean Radio every Saturday at 8 p.m. Don't miss it. Senior citizens were treated to lunch at Government House on Saturday as part of National Volunteer Day activities. We visited the venue and spoke to Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris, who was on hand to help serve lunch to the seniors. Jacinthia Teixeira has more. Saturday, February 15th was National Volunteers Day and representatives of the government took time out to give back to the community. At Government House, the annual luncheon for senior citizens was hosted, with members of Cabinet, notably Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris, taking time to serve the guests. After the function, the Prime Minister spoke to SK Newsline about the activity. I think he spoke on behalf of all the elders who are present today. Um, and have each of them in the room around and would say it was very nice. They were happy to be here. They came from Nevis, they came from Nevis, they came from all parts of St. Kitts and Nevis. And I want to commend the Governor General for allowing this historic house to be utilized for an event like this. Meanwhile, Ms. Anne Wigley of the Social Services Department spoke about this year's Volunteers' Day activities. And this is the third event, and it is the biggest that we had. Right now, oh boy, we had about close to 700 persons that I count, maybe more. And uh, it was very successful. There are a number of some persons who gave us gifts to give out during the, the period, which we are thanking them for. And the seniors are most grateful for this kind of outing that they get to mix, mingle, and come along with persons who they haven't seen for a good time. So we are thanking the government for having this kind of event and hope that it will continue because the seniors do look out for something like this. National Volunteer Day was introduced in 2018 by the government to foster a greater sense of civil identity, unity, service and responsibility in citizens and residents. I am Jacinthia Tishiro for SKN Newsline. On to news in sports, Newtown FC were crushed 6-0 in Sunday's SKNFA Premier League action, while Central Bastia outfits Garden Hotspurs edged St. Paul's 2-1 in a thriller on Saturday night. Hobson Enterprises' Garden Hotspurs edged SL Horsehood St. Paul's 2-1 in the lone SKNFA Premier League match on Saturday night at the Warner Park. Steve Archibald got Spurs off the mark in the 25th minute before St. Paul's equalized early in the second half. But about a minute later, Spurs scored a similar goal from a corner kick to take the lead and eventually the win. Here are highlights from the Voice of the Caribbean radio commentary. On the right wing, trying to find Freeman, but um, was cut out there by the defender for Gary Hotspurs. As the corner comes in, and the ball is in the back of the net. 
I think it came off. A gun had supposed defender who was standing up on the goal line. As the corner comes in and it's going for the far post, it's in the back of the net. Yes, it is! It is in the back of the net. The goalkeeper going up, trying to box that one, fish it out, Lashawn. But it going and looking on the far side, the assistant Murphy running up to the half line. At the end of the match, coach of Spurs, Austin Dico Huggins, laid out the blueprint for his team's victory. As we we did this week in training, we were expecting the, the, the quick and, and fast counter-attack from St. Paul's. Um, we, we worked towards that. We had um, a few trains that also made in the starting level to accommodate that kind of um, intensity and that kind of speed coming from St. Paul. Uh, the latter part of the game, we had an onslaught. That was because uh, due to the fact that we had a player you know, sent off. But nevertheless, we were able to withstand the pressure and um, were able to hold on to the points and come out victorious. Huggins, who coached St. Paul's in previous seasons, even leading them to two titles, takes pleasure in coming up against his old team. Well, I always um, relish the occasion. Um, all of us good friends, we, we get along very well. And um, I think I have the respect from them and they also have the respect from me. And I always look forward to that kind of challenge. You are the best in both teams. Meanwhile, coach Iroy Kunga Jeffers said his team played well, but no, they have to work on their defensive frailties. When it was one day, I told my team that one day they're in a lead right now in football, so we just got to continue working and working. From the next 45 minutes, start working towards a only goal as only as possible. We get it. Unfortunately, one score from a set play, it's just that like we lose focus and giving away simple corners. Just the other day I was reflecting on the last trainer I tell him the, the stats where really there are four goals scored on us. That's the less goals on us. So we're doing good in defensive wise. But today we just fall asleep and two goals just score on us. And that's why we got some time. I'll be back out in Puchene on Monday. So we gotta recuperate. Rest tomorrow, come back on Monday. Goal scorers in that match, Kalanji Clark in the 52nd minute for St. Paul's and for Spurs, Steve Archibald, as we indicated, in the 25th minute and Akio Benjamin in the 85th minute. Shaquille Adams was issued a red card after picking up his second yellow card in the 78th minute for Spurs. In the weekend's other results on Sunday, Mantab FC defeated Trafalgar South Stars 3-1. Goal scorer for South Stars, Dylan Morton, in the 63rd minute from the penalty spot. And the goal scorer for Mantab, Jermaine Carey, scoring a hat-trick in the 73rd and a penalty in the 75th minute. In the second match on Sunday, Saul Island Auto Supplies Connery FC crushed Elko Limited Security Forces United 4-0. Kadim Lewis scored a hat-trick in the 70th, 72nd and 88th minutes for Connery. And Newson Slater scored in the 85th minute, adding to that tally. Red card was issued to Kevin Benjamin of Connery in the 78th minute, denying an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. In the third and final match on Sunday, it was a showdown between St. Peter's and S. Grave Newtown United, and the match turned out heavily in favor of St. Peter's, who drubbed Newtown six goals to nil. John Isaac scored two goals in the 5th and 40th minute. Devontae Fai struck twice, scoring in the 34th and 56th minute. Kareem Simmons in the 51st minute. And Taekwon Terrell scoring from the penalty spot in the 70th minute. The SKNFA Premier League continues with the rescheduled weekend match between Fast Cast Silas United and KC United All Road Jets. That match was scheduled for Saturday, February 15th. That will now be played on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Then at 8 p.m. is the big matchup of this round in the SKNFA Premier League, Rams Village Superstars vs Flow 4G Kian Rockets. Both matches will be played at the Warner Park Football Stadium. And that will do it for this edition of the SK Newsline Newscast. Remember to download our Android mobile app. Just search SK Newsline in the Google Play Store. Follow us also on Facebook and our YouTube channel and visit our website at www.sknnewsline.com for more news and features. From all of us here at SKN Newsline, I'm Andre Huey. Thank you for joining us.